So this is the brand new Rabbit R1, probably one of the most anticipated launches of 2024, and I've been using this for about the past day now. And this is just totally different than anything I've ever reviewed on this channel. Rather than a lot of the app-based operating systems you're used to, this is an AI-first piece of hardware that interacts with what Rabbit calls a large action model. So what does that mean? Well, I've been playing around with this for about the past day, and I have five examples that really illustrate cool things that it can do that make it unique, make it interesting, and potentially a big part of the future. So in this video, I'll talk about those five things that you can do out of the box if you get one and immediately just start to become a power user with this device. Because I think a lot of people see this and being such a different device, they wonder like, what can it really do? Like, what does it do differently? And what actually makes it useful? Now, by the way, this video was sponsored by Rabbit and therefore I'm viewing this purely through an optimist perspective. I'll be talking about what this can do and what it can do really well. Still, I think this will be a really interesting video to answer the question of if you get one, like what can it really do well? What's the vision of this product? And before I get into the hardware, I wanna start off with one really cool example, the first example, and then I'll start to explain the hardware and I think it'll all make a lot more sense. So the first example I found was, let's just say you have a, a document. Maybe you got a letter in the mail, maybe it is a contract, maybe it is a user manual, some document that has a lot of information on it and you don't feel like reading through it or maybe you just don't understand the legal jargon in it and you, wanna, you have a question about that. Maybe it's like, how much would I have to pay my landlord if my rent was four days late or something like that? Well, what you can do is you can turn on this device, double press the side button, that turns on the camera, you point it at the document that you wanna scan, and then you press and hold and ask the question. This thing can read the entire document very quickly and it'll answer your question. So here's a quick example of that. According to this lease agreement, does my landlord need to notify me before they enter the premise? Let me take a look. According to the lease agreement, your landlord and its agents, contractors, and invitees shall have the right to enter the premises, to inspect, to supply any services that landlord is obligated to provide under the terms of this lease, and to exhibit premises to prospective buyers, lenders, or tenants. This indicates that your landlord does not need to notify you prior to entering the premises to perform these activities. So that I think is the first and probably one of the really cool examples of how this can be useful. Essentially, you're able to take inputs from the external world and ask questions about them without having to type everything in, without having to copy and paste language. You can just look at it, point at it, and it can interpret it as if it were like your really smart friend next to you. Okay, so that, that's one really cool example there. But let's talk a little bit more about the hardware before we get into the second example, because I think by now, like you might understand, okay, I kind of get the way this is going, but what is this device? So on the right side, we have a little window that has a, a, a rotating camera on the inside, which is a really unique way to manage that. So the camera by default, which is really nice for privacy reasons, is pointing straight down. It's not until you turn on the vision on here, so double pressing the button on the side, does the camera actually wake up and turn to the back? If you then rotate the wheel, there's this cool wheel in the middle, if you rotate that, the camera flips back towards you. So it's a front vision now. You can flip it either way, and when you're done, you just double press the side button, and that'll put the camera back away. So that right there is really a unique way, and I think a pretty clever way to manage the camera on here. Again, giving you a little more privacy, and at the same time, making this really cool. So this, as you can notice, is kind of a teenage engineering look to it, and it's no coincidence that it does look like that. They did help to design the aesthetics on this. And of course, like I said, we have the wheel that can control a lot. Uh, we have the button that controls a lot as well. And technically this is a touch screen. However, you rarely actually use the touch screen. The idea here is to make this not like your phone. The idea is to make it a lot more like an AI first device, which it actually is. But if you ever wanted to use the touch screen, you could do this, for example, if you rotate it sideways, if you enable terminal that is, you rotate it sideways and a keyboard can pop up. So if you're in a really loud space, you can't ask this a question maybe, you can always type in your question uh, just like that. Looking at the back real quickly, you'll see we have a speaker down there. We have microphones in the top. This also connects by Bluetooth. It has a SIM card slot on the left side. So if you don't have Wi-Fi, this can use cellular as well. And we have a USB Type-C port to charge it. So that's a crash course on, on what the device actually looks like. Let's get into the second example of what you could do with this. So let's say that you are 
I don't know, you were just at the mall or you're just somewhere else and a song is stuck in your head and you wanna play it. That's for me how I get songs out of my head when they're stuck, so if you know, like, okay, it's a Grateful Dead song and like the chorus says, don't murder me. Like I know, I know that, and I don't know what the song is called. You could just ask it, you could just say, play the Grateful Dead song that says, don't murder me in the chorus. And I've tried this with a number of different songs. It seems to work pretty well for a lot of the more popular songs, really well-known songs out there. Um, and so I think that's a really cool, really useful feature. So this does integrate with several different platforms. Just at launch right now, I'm sure more will be coming. But right now, this works well with Spotify, it works with Uber, it works with DoorDash, and it works with Midjourney. So in essence, you can ask questions and have it play songs on Spotify. You can ask to, uh, for it to order you an Uber, maybe an Uber XL to the nearest McDonald's, for example. Now, use case number three. I thought this is really interesting as well. Again, using the camera to interpret information around you without you having to type it into some other app-based interface. So the next one is if I have an air quality meter and it tells me five different numbers, maybe I don't know what those numbers mean. Maybe I just want my air to be as good as possible and I don't know anything about that. I can simply point this at my air quality meter with the vision on and just ask it, According to this air quality meter, how can I improve my air quality? Let me see. According to the air quality meter, the PM25 level is currently at 2 micrograms per cubic meter, which is considered excellent. The TVOC, total volatile organic compounds level, is 0 0.192 ppm, and the CO2 level is 560 ppm. These readings suggest the air quality is generally good. To further improve the air quality, you could consider the following. One, increase ventilation by opening windows or using an air purifier to circulate fresh air and reduce the concentration of indoor pollutants. Two, identify and eliminate any potential sources of VOCs, such as new furniture, cleaning products, or fragrances which can contribute to elevated TVOC levels. Three, monitor the CO2 levels and ensure adequate fresh air intake, as high CO2 concentrations can indicate the need for improved ventilation. The current readings indicate the air quality is already at a high level, but these steps can help maintain or potentially further enhance the indoor air quality in your environment. Now example number four, again, I'm coming up with a lot of examples after using these, but five that I thought were really cool. The fourth one here is going to be the ability for this device to read and interpret a graph or a chart or anything like that. So if I look at my old engineering vibrations textbook and we just find, there's a lot of charts in here. I'll try a couple different ones for you, but the first one, just an undamped harmonic oscillation. And we wanna ask, you know, just explain this graph, explain this to me. Please explain this graph to me. Taking a look now. This graph depicts the undamped free response of a system, which is the motion of the system when it is allowed to oscillate freely without any external forces applied. The key features of the graph are, one, displacement. The graph shows the displacement of the system over time, starting from an initial displacement. Two, amplitude. The maximum displacement of the system is called the amplitude, which is represented by the peaks in the graph. Three, period. The time it takes for the system to complete one full cycle of oscillation is called the period, which is represented by the distance between two consecutive peaks or valleys. Four, phase. The phase is the position of the system in its oscillation cycle, represented by the angle between the displacement and a reference point. Five, maximum velocity. The maximum velocity of the system occurs at the zero crossing points where the displacement is zero and the velocity is at its maximum. The mathematical equation provided describes the displacement of the system over time, incorporating the period, phase, and frequency of the oscillation. This equation allows you to calculate the displacement velocity, and other characteristics of the undamped free response of the system. And this is something that you would really have to know the technical term for the graph to really understand it or to look it up on any traditional platform. Being able to just search it with this, 
again, allows you to not need to have a lot of information about something before you learn about it. And what I thought was really interesting is that this did not just read out what the chart said and, and just tell it back to me blindly. Instead, it gave extra context, extra information that really explained, for example, uh, what the period actually was like from peak to peak. That's what the distance is on a period. Or it also told me like, what is the phase delay? Even though it kind of shows it on the graph, this explained what that actually was. Now moving on to number five, this is really cool. Again, you can ask questions about physical objects. Not only can you say like, what is this? But you can have some more complex questions. You can ask what kind of plant is this and how much water do I have to give it? You can ask, uh, what is this musical instrument? And what is an easy song that I can learn with it? Or you can ask, uh, which of these two instruments is more difficult to learn? So maybe you are like in your grandparents attic and you find some like, I don't know, an old mandolin or some other instrument you might not even know about. And you can just ask it questions about cool stuff like that. Okay, now I wanna go through a real quick UI tour, even though you'll be doing most of your interactions with this by pressing and holding and asking or turning on the vision and then pressing and holding and asking. If you wanted to, for example, go into settings or change your song, uh, let's start off with settings. If you just gently shake the device, it brings up your settings, as you can see right here. And then using the wheel, you can scroll between brightness, volume, Bluetooth, network, security, and you can power it off as well. Uh, you can just press the button then and manage any of those. So like press and hold it, turn the wheel to, to adjust the brightness. I think that's pretty cool. And then if you're playing a song, so if you just tell it to play Spotify, you can just scroll the wheel from your home screen up uh, or down and that'll bring you to, uh, you'll just get into the interface there where you see, you see the song. And then from there, if you scroll the wheel, you can either skip a song or go into the queue and just kind of go down and choose maybe the next song, for example. So even though it's a, a, like an AI and voice first, like vision focused product, you're still able to manage it and use the wheel without having to say next song every time you wanted to skip a song. So those are five really cool and novel uses that I found for the Rabbit R1, but I've only used it for a day. So I'm sure in the future, I'm gonna find infinitely more cool use cases for this, but this is $199. It doesn't have any subscription. It's actually the only AI hardware device that doesn't have a subscription model and comes with perplexity. Uh, and it's a very cheap device for $199. But I think you're still, like, as an optimist, I'm very excited to see where this technology goes. I think this is going to be the kind of thing that people look at in the beginning and they try to compare it to a phone. But this is a very different device that would have very different use cases. So leave a comment below and let me know what you think about this, where you think it might be used, if you think it's worth it, and what you think you would like to do with a device like this. So since you enjoyed the video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Michael Bryan. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.